Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to properly solder wire. Don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on link in the description below. Be sure to check out my other social media pages such as Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This was an older video I did produce in the past, therefore I wanted to provide a better quality along with answering any questions which were asked in a previous video. There are different types of soldering tools that can be purchased. The first is a soldering iron, which I am using here. A soldering iron tends to be smaller, normally rated at a lower wattage. This model has interchangeable tips as well and can be purchased for about $15. They are great for any hobbyist and has gotten me by perfectly on any projects such as stereo installations, tractor wiring, installing auxiliary lights, and other electronics projects. The lower wattage doesn't allow the solder to melt as quickly, therefore if you need to complete a larger job, it may take much longer and may not be sufficient enough to solder larger gauge wires. A soldering gun, on the other hand, is normally rated at a higher wattage, tends to be larger in size, and is about $30 to purchase. This can't be necessarily used on electronics components as it can cause damage. Therefore, it is great for larger gauge wires and larger jobs. And finally, there's a soldering station which has a controllable heat range, is recommended for professional work, and is much more expensive, normally starting from $100 and up. The controllable heat range gives you the best of both worlds, therefore it can be used for fine work and larger projects. There are two different types of solder which is used in electronic soldering. Rosin core lead free solder and rosin core lead solder. Rosin core solder does have the chemical to clean the connection which is rosin and is used when soldering wires and electronics. Rosin is the flux. Do not use an acid based solder such as what is found in plumbing applications as this will cause the connection to corrode and eventually fail. Lead solder tends to be a little easier to work with, has a lower melting point, but is hazardous to both your health and the environment. Due to the change in environmental regulations, lead-free solder is becoming more common. It does have a higher melting point, but it's able to withstand higher heat applications and is more environmentally friendly. Here I am using a lead-free rosin core solder made by Mutter. It has a 0.6 mm thickness, 2% rosin core, comes in a 0.22 kg roll, and has a 215 to a 220 Celsius or 419 to 428 Fahrenheit melting point. The link to this product will be included in the description below. First we need to allow the soldering tool to come up to temperature. It's best to work in a well ventilated area as we do not want to breathe in the fumes. I would also recommend wearing safety glasses. Always clean the soldering irons tip before and after usage. This is done by heating up the tip then rubbing it on a wet sponge. If this isn't done, this will cause heat transfer problems along with introducing impurities into the solder joint. Once the tip has been cleaned, now we must tin it. This helps prolong the life and promotes heat transfer to the connection. Do not cut the solder, simply unroll a couple feet so we have plenty to work with. Cutting the solder can be wasteful and whatever we don't use can be rolled up afterwards. Clean wire is extremely important as this will cause adhesion issues. If the wire was corroded, it's best to cut back and find a clean section to work with. Stranded wire can be especially hard to clean than compared to solid wire. Rosin flux can be used besides rosin core solder to maximize cleaning. Contact cleaner can also be used or rubbing alcohol with a toothbrush. The rosin core in the solder will also clean the connection if it's not overly dirty. When the connection is heated, the rosin will eventually burn off. Here I will be demonstrating a few different techniques used to connect wire when soldering. Towards the end of the video, I will also be touching on waterproofing the connection. Starting with number one. First is a connection used by many, similar type of technique compared to the Western Union splice which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Strip the insulation back roughly three quarters of an inch. Spread the strands of wire. Then insert the strands into each other like so. Continue to twist the strands around each other, somewhat interlocking the connection. Now continue to solder the joint. Ensure the soldering iron is hot, the tip is tinned, and then apply it to the connection. Wait a moment and then apply the solder. In order for the solder to melt in the connection, the wire must be hot. Once done, this is the connection. Number two. Next is a Western Union splice, also known as lineman splice. This can be used on both solid and stranded wire, but is more suitable for solid wire. Start by stripping the insulation back about three quarters of an inch on each wire. Next cross each exposed wire about 90 degrees and then twist around each other on the opposite ends. 
If required, use pliers to push the tip of the wire down so it doesn't create an excessively sharp edge which can cause issues such as poking through the insulation. Now we can solder the joint. Again, ensure the tip is tinned, then apply it to the joint, allow it to heat up, and apply solder. Finally, you should be left with something such as this. This is a very strong connection, if done correctly, can be stronger than the wire itself. The wire should be wrapped about five times. Next is number three, a T or tap splice connection. This joint is intended to attach new wire to an existing length of wire without cutting into it. Strip the section of wire back that you want to intercept. Here I'm using a knife, but be careful not to cut the existing strands of wire. Remove about three quarters of an inch of insulation back on both pieces of wire. If you are working with solid wire, intercept the new wire at 90 degrees, wrap it around tightly to the existing wire. If you are working with stranded wire, the wire can be separated into two sections if you desire, but isn't required. The intercepting wire would then be inserted into the center, then wrapped around tightly, pulling the two separate pieces back together. First wrap going in the opposite direction once, then go back and continue the other way. Depending on which way you're running the wire in the end, this will depend on its orientation of the wrap. You're looking at about five times of wrap. Use pliers to push down the tip if required, so it doesn't create a sharp edge, again like before, where it creates an issue of poking through the insulation afterwards. Again, ensure the soldering iron tip is tinned, heat up the joint, and then apply the solder to the connection. Finally, this is the final product. Number four, and lastly, a rat tail solder joint. Strip the insulation wire back roughly about three quarters of an inch on each wire strand. Place both wires side by side and then twist together. Again, we're looking for about five times of wrap. Then apply solder to the connection. Unfortunately, this isn't a strong connection, therefore it's least desirable. You should be left with something such as this. Tips when soldering, try to position the soldering irons tip below the joint as heat rises. There is no need to use an excessive amount of solder. Do not move the joint until the solder has cooled. If the joint has moved, then the solder will not appear smooth and dull. If you are using a lead-free solder, the solder will not appear to have a shiny finish as compared to a lead-based solder. Do not overheat the wire as this can affect the finish of the solder and can damage the existing insulation. Once done, you have three different choices for sealing the connection. It's important to seal up the connection regardless if it's exposed to exterior elements or not, as moisture is always present in the air. This will cause the connection to corrode, in the end making it fail. Now I have produced a video on this, which I will include in the description below. But as an overview, we can use shrink tube. This is available in both with and without adhesive, but needs to be applied before the connection is soldered and the wire needs to be spliced. Next is self-fusing tape, which can be applied to any connection, and the same goes for liquid tape too. New videos are being uploaded every week to my channel. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button below the video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.